this demonstration, we're going to look at business process management within the Cordis platform. Business process management is core to the Cordis business operations platform and is provided by the platform both on-premise, in the cloud, and also a mix of both. In addition to this, any type of process is supported, both system to system in a typical process fashion, human to human in a workflow and task management type approach, or indeed system to human or human to system. This is achieved within the Cordis platform through a number of graphical modeling environments, allowing us to model, execute, measure and improve business processes throughout the life cycle of a project. In addition to modeling and execution of processes, KPIs and SLAs can be set on those processes within the graphical environment, an environment which is also accessible by both the business and IT audiences to allow collaborative modeling of business processes. Finally, this modeling and execution of processes is done through a browser from both business and IT users, providing the capability to model and execute processes from anywhere with an internet connection. So let's get into the demo itself. We start the demo logged into the Cordis platform through the browser, and on the left-hand side, we can see a hierarchical view of the current project that we're working in within the Cordis Collaborative workspace. Underneath business processes, you can see we currently have two processes, and we're going to simply right click and create new process to begin our process. The process we're going to create is a simple customer order process whereby a customer can look up their details, place an order, we can check whether the order is in stock, dispatch the order and then send a notification to the customer. So the first thing we do is be begin by drawing that process in our process designer. This is a simple case of clicking in the artifacts on the left hand side and then dropping them into the right hand side of the screen. First thing we're going to do is add some swim lanes. So we, the first one can be customer services. We can then add another one for internal systems. And finally, one for supplier. Once we've created our swim lanes, we have the option of modifying colors and attributes for these. We'll leave them as they are for now and begin to create our process. To start the process, we create a start event. And what we can see with each event we create, we have a series of optional next activities we can add to the process. So we will take an initial activity and we'll call it lookup customer. We'll take a second activity and we'll call that place order. When the customer places the order, the first thing we want to do is check if stock is available. So we can move to a back-end system here and choose check stock. In order to decide what to do when we do the stock check, we need to add a decision. So we add a decision activity of in stock. And then if there is stock, we can simply ship the order. And the final thing we will do in that situation is notify the customer that the order has shipped. In the case where the item is not in stock, we can add an extra activity, which is a web service call to the supplier to order more stock. and then finally link these together. So once the stock is in, we can ship to the customer. And finally, we have a finish activity over on the right for the end of the process. Little bit of tidying up on the process. We can put a yes condition in here and a no condition in here. And then the process is complete. As we can see from what we've just done, it is extremely simple in the Cordis platform to model processes as if they were being done in Visio or any other process modeling tool. I can now save the process and we will call this order process and select OK. What we've now done is saved the order process in our project hierarchy and it's now ready for some implementation. Now that the order process has been created within the collaborative workspace, I can log in as potentially a different role, in this case probably a technical person, and open up exactly the same process diagram. And what we'll see is the process that we created previously as a business user 
but this time we're going to add some functionality to the process. I could, if I chose to at this point, modify this process. For example, I could add other activities. I could add messages, decisions. I could add sub-processes or completely change the process as appropriate. However, what we're going to do is concentrate on the functionality and adding some functionality to the process. If we look at the first step in this process, look up customer, this needs to be a user interface where customer services will be able to type in the ID of a customer and look up that customer's details. So if I look to the bottom left hand corner, I can switch to the workspace, so the project workspace we spoke of earlier. And within here, I have a folder called user interfaces where other members of the project team have created user interfaces as part of this project. And we can see here there is one called lookup customer. In order to associate the lookup customer user interface with this step in my process, it's a simple case of drag and drop into the process. And what we'll see when that's done is a small icon in the top left hand corner of this activity, which indicates this is a human task. The second step in the process is place order. This again is going to be a screen where the customer services representative will enter the details of the customer's order. And over on the left hand side again within my project we can see we have a place order screen. A simple case of drag and drop again will allow me to associate this user interface with the particular step in the process. Moving on through the process the next step is check stock and this is actually a service call from one of our internal systems. Through the ability Cordis has to integrate into backend systems, we can see that at the bottom of our project on the left hand side, we have some internal web services. And in fact, in the customer systems web service folder, we should be able to see a check stock web service. Again, it's simply a case of dragging and dropping this web service onto our process diagram. And what we will now see is instead of the human icon showing representing a screen, we have a service icon representing a web service. In order to complete the functionality within this process, we need to add services to the external supplier, um, the ship to customer and the notify customer shipment. So we'll go ahead and do that very quickly. And once we've completed that, we can now see that all of the activities within the process are assigned either a user interface or a service. So we'll go ahead and save this one more time. And the final thing we need to do in this process before we execute and begin to test the process is implement how the data will flow through the process and how each activity is connected to the next. In order to do this, we switch to the message map view where we can see a representation of the process along the top. And if I click on any activity within the process, I will get to see the inputs on the left hand side and the outputs for each of the activities within the process. In this case, we can see that the place order activity will require an input of an order ID over on the right hand side. And the lookup customer, which also looks up the customer's previous orders, will have an output equating also to an order ID field. To make the association between the two, I simply drag and drop from each side into the middle. I can add extra manipulation or data manipulation in between these two fields if I choose, but in this case, it's a simple one-to-one -one relationship. If I then move on to the check stock web service, we can see that the check stock web service simply requires a product ID and that product ID will be the one which was entered when the order was placed. And we can see that on the output of the place order model on the left hand side, we can see we have an output of product ID. Again, simply drag and drop to create this association. As we move through the process, what we're doing in each of the web services or screens is providing inputs and output that allow that activity within the process to execute and return its result. Once we've completed all the mappings, we switch back to the model view of our order process, and we are then ready to save for one last time. And finally, we can now look at testing the process before we deploy it into production.
Having now modeled our order process as a business user and implemented the order process and the technical aspects of that process as a technical user, we're now going to use the Cordis Collaborative Workspace to open the process one final time. And we look at exactly the same process model as we have been doing so far, but this time we're going to test the execution of the process. To do this, I simply right click on the process model and choose execution. And underneath the execution menu, I have a number of options available to me. The one we're going to choose is run interactively, which will allow us to step through the process step by step, seeing each of the activities run in sequence. Once the test screen opens up, we will see a representation of our process and over on the right hand side, the options to run through the process interactively, either directly to the end of the process, step by step, or further debugging options are available. We're going to choose to step into the process and we'll see the animation in the background as the first screen opens and this is the lookup customer screen, the first step in our process. Once the screen opens up, I can interact with it and I'll type in a customer ID. And when I hit search, we're calling web services which searches the customers table in our database, also previous orders and shows us a map and some KPIs against the orders that this customer has had. Once this step in the process is complete, I click on the complete icon and this will take us to the next step in the process which is place order. Again, this is a screen and based upon the mappings that we created earlier in the message map tool, we can see that we've mapped through some of the customer information into this screen. We can go and enter an order ID and then enter some product details to place an order. So product ID of 12, the unit price is $100 and we want 20 in quantity. Once I filled in the order screen, again, I can complete this step in the process and we can see so far that certain activities have been successful represented by the tick and we notice the animation has now run all the way through to the end as everything after the place order step was a web service and therefore an automatic part of the process. We can also see the path which the process took in this case telling us that the product that we ordered was in stock and has therefore been shipped and the notification been sent. If we refresh and choose to run the process through again, as before stepping into the first activity within the process, look up customer, entering a customer ID and searching for that customer. We hit the complete button as before, move through to the place order screen and this time we will attempt to enter an order item that is not in stock so we can ensure that the rules within the decision point of our process work correctly. This time we'll enter a product ID of 13 and that is also $100 and we want 200 of them. And if I at this point move on through the process we will see when the process animates through the set of services. This time the product was out of stock and in this case we ordered more stock from the supplier and eventually shipped the customer and completed the process. Now that we've tested the process it is ready for final deployment as part of our overall project. What we've seen in this demonstration is the ease with which we can create processes as a business user by simply modeling from a browser-based design environment we then move on from business user level modeling to technical implementation within the same collaborative environment and further on to being able to test and deploy that process as part of a bigger project or application. Mm -hmm.